everything. You're nothing. You're a failure. John has lost complete control of our sons. How did you get the black eye? My 12-year-old slugged me. You're their mother, you have custody, and you've moved 1,500 miles away. Lori is a runaway mom. It's a complete lie. They wanted to go live with their father, Dr. Phil. OK, didn't work. Now what? You've got chaos inside that home. How could you leave your children in that situation for one day? Let's do it. Why don't we stop all the drama, stop all the fighting, and let's go get you better. Here we go. Have a good show, everybody. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, three, take. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Do it, Dr. Phil. As you all know, we've done a lot of shows about single moms, right? And that's exactly what grabbed the attention of our first guest. John is a divorced dad who boasts in his letter to me that he is one in a million. When I say that John boasts, I mean John boasts. <laughs> he writes, you never have a single dad raising kids. The reason? There are none. Why? Because dads can't handle raising kids. They all suck except for me. Put me on and I will show you how a single dad who looks like John Bon Jovi <laughs> is raising three boys alone with no help whatsoever. If you don't, then you are afraid to hear the truth. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, there's not much I'm afraid of, especially the truth. So if John has got this so wired up, let's just hear what he has to say. I'm a single dad raising three kids on my own. I consider myself one in a million. Divorced dads do not raise their children, and I am the exception. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard. John thinks he's God's gift to.
everything. If I wanted to, I could be out chasing girls. That's not a problem. With my looks and charm, I can get any girl that I want. He's got this grandiose opinion of himself. I'm a dead ringer for John Bon Jovi. If I met Jennifer Aniston, I would sweep her off her feet. I know that uh, she would love to meet me. But instead, I've decided not to get involved with younger, pretty girls because I have three children to raise. About a year after the children moved in with John, I decided to move with my boyfriend 1,500 miles away. Lori abandoned her children. I've never abandoned my boys. I feel that John feels I abandoned him. She was unfazed about leaving her own children. John thinks he's God's gift to single dads, but I think John's doing this simply because he's trying to prove a point, but the point is that he's a failure. You say that, that single dads find a hot younger chick to marry and they, they ignore their first kids. Correct. But you didn't do that. No. You, you said you could have. Of course. Um, in, in fact, you said, I could have had a stripper pole in my condo and had chicks in there every night. That's correct. That's correct. What does that mean? That means I could have played around like most dads do when they get divorced. And I didn't do that. Yeah. You also say that you're a writer? Correct. I wrote a memoir. You said, I write better than John Grisham and James Patterson put together. That's correct. And if you read my book, you'd agree to that also. And I did it single-handed with now with no ghost writers. Yeah, you seem angry. Um, yes, I'm angry because I have three children that I'm raising for the past three years. It's just overwhelming to raise children. Dads don't understand. Well, they're not my kids. Why are you angry at me? <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm asking you questions. That's right, buddy. You better believe it. Okay, okay. Like, I mean, like, okay, I mean, okay, I'll laugh. Right, why? I... It's not a joke. It's a lot of work raising children 24-7 without any support. How did you get the black eye? My 12-year-old did that last week. And accident or on purpose? Uh, on purpose. It was not an accident. And um, I told him to get off the computer, and he wouldn't listen, and I went to grab him to take him off. He turned around and slugged me. He says he's one in a million, uh, but maybe he's not perfect in what he does. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. John has lost complete control of our sons. No need for frozen pizza. My house, my rules. They are running the entire household. My boys do not respect me at all. John has absolutely zero parenting skills. John lets the kids walk all over him. It's not nice to talk like that, OK? Constantly talking back to me. Is this sleeping? Why not? The boys have called me. <laughs> Stupid, ugly. The boys treat me like garbage. Sometimes I cause more trouble, but sometimes he causes more trouble. The twins are constantly fighting. John gets right involved in the middle of it, antagonizes them, and it gets out of hand. All you do is raise your voice, scream, yell, yeah, laugh real loud. Yeah. I want to blow my brains out because you, you never stop. You yell. don't stop it. One day, uh, Alexander wanted to go on the computer. I went and grabbed him to pull him off. He just like, got on me. He turned around and whacked me in the face. I received a black eye. They don't fear me at all. The house is a complete disaster. Nobody does anything. It is impossible to get the boys to do chores. He has too many rules. Yeah, like too many. There is absolutely no discipline on John's behalf. For the 10,000th time, it's disrespect. I've tried grounding them, and that's a joke. They tell me, yeah, sure, and they walk out of the house. I know the 10 fathers would bash your face in. I've tried taking away the computer, and they'll say, F you, and go on it. They do what they want. They are in control of the whole household. I think John is failing as a dad. I've run out of options, and I just don't know what to do. So what's your reaction to that? That is all true. So we got the tail wagging the dog here. The dad is not in control. Not at all. So maybe it's good that you're one in a million, because dads should be in control. Right, but most of them will beat the crap out of them. OK, I don't hit my children. I try to use respect, love, hugging them, but there's a trade-off to that. Sometimes it backfires in your face. Why do you think they don't respect you? I think because I'm a softy. I think because I, I do raise my voice, I have my rules, but they are not afraid of me, and they keep telling me, I'm not afraid of you. You don't scare me. 
Well, is it defined at that level where it's who's the biggest, who's the scariest, who's the loudest? Right now, yeah, they're in control because daddy, they are not afraid of daddy at all. And that's not what my intentions are. But they basically step all over me. They call me the maid. I'm the maid. Get me this. Get me a juice. Make me this. Do Give you? me that. Yes. And sometimes I say, sometimes, yes, sometimes I say, get it yourself. You're not two years old. F you. You go get it. You're the maid. That's how they, with yelling. And you yell back. I raise my voice. So yes. you guys get in a yelling contest. Yes. Well, sometimes I ignore it, but yes. But there's three of them and one of you, Correct. so you can't play man to man here. You got to go zone. There's three on one. Correct. And that makes it tough, which means you've got to have a relationship where there's some respect and they acknowledge your position and your authority. And right now you're saying that's not happening. It's zero. All right. Next, John told us his ex-wife Lori abandoned their boys when she moved 1,500 miles away from them. We're going to add her to the conversation when we come back. Lori will only see the kids once or twice a year. I am actively involved with my children. I feel that Lori is a runaway mom. You got parents that know they're bad parents. They do things that are bad. OK, I look in the mirror every day, and I know I'm a great father. I don't have a living girlfriend that could act like a mommy. So not only am I single dad, not only do I have three, not only do two of them are twins, but I have zero support. I am one in a million, and I am better than most single dads. Now, we started this show with single dad John being pretty proud of the fact that he stayed plugged in. But he says at this point, he's plugged in, but he's out of control and admitted that his house is in turmoil, and he says he has no control over his boys. He says they don't have any respect for him, don't listen to what he says, they call him names, call him the maid, tell him to just go jump in the lake in much more graphic terms. Now, one of the twins even gave John a black eye last week when there was kind of a wrestling match over who was going to be on the computer. So where is mom in all of this? She's not exactly out of the picture, but she is certainly out of the zip code. John's ex-wife, Lori, has moved 1,500 miles away from her boys, even after she was awarded primary custody. I feel that Lori is a runaway mom. When John says, I'm a runaway mom, it's a complete lie. It's fathers from the truth. The boys miss their mommy. They need their mother. Lori will only see the kids once or twice a year for a week or so. I speak with them almost on a daily basis, and if they ever need anything, they call me and I'm there for them. I feel like I need my mom in my life. She is not here to have fun with me. I am actively involved with my children. I talk to John, I give him advice. He calls me and asks me for advice all the time, but it seems like it goes in one ear out the other. She's so far away that I feel like there's not much you can do. She's not there every night to say, I love you, and be there for me. I think if Lori was involved, the boys would be better behaved. <laughs> OK, so you have primary custody of these children. I do. And you're their mother. Yes, I am. You're, you're the bio mom of all three of these children. Correct. Uh, but they're with their father. Yes. And you've moved 1,500 miles away. Yes. And the kids, do you agree the kids are out of control? Absolutely out of control. And you think it's because he doesn't know what he's doing? That is correct. I, I don't get it. You're their mother. You have custody. They're with someone, and you both agree it isn't working. And you're just gone? I, 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 I've been a I, parent. I, I've raised two boys along with my wife. And I never saw the box that you check out. I, I never saw that. I always <laughs> saw it. They were your responsibility and you had to plug in. Where, how, did you, how did you do that? Dr. Phil, I took care of the boys for most of their young life. Yeah. Just up until two years ago when they decided they wanted to see how living with their father was like. I interacted with them. They had straight A's. They never sweared at me. We had no fist fights. I let them try to be with their father. I gave John shared custody so that he could try to be a dad to them. OK, fair experiment. Didn't work. Right. Now what? I would like him to get real. He is delusional with his personal life. 
He does not treat his family, his children, like a family. What is he delusional about? John is delusional because he's obsessed with money. He feels that if he has money, that's going to save everything. Are you wealthy? I'm broke. <laughs> You're broke? Flat broke. Flat broke. So he's obsessed with money because he doesn't have any? Correct. Right. And you think you're going to get back on your feet financially? Hopefully. Yeah. Do you have a job? Not really. Do you look for jobs? Yes. Because you want to be an entrepreneur, right? I've been an entrepreneur all my life. All right. my life. How has that worked out for you? I had a magazine, a real estate magazine, for 15 years. Mm -hmm. It was very successful. I had 100 employees. And um, <clears throat> I was indicted for tax evasion in 2003. Mm -hmm. And um, I pled guilty to the advice of my lawyer, received uh, a six-year sentence, which was outrageous. And the kids only came to see me three times, and I lost everything, money, everything. And when I got out of prison four years ago, yeah, I went to get some jobs, but I have a felon. I'm a felon. You can, even if I had a doctor's degree, a master's degree, no one's going to hire you. They have policies. Major companies have policies. So I get these stupid jobs that are minimum wage, run-of-the-mill, sales calls. I got fired after two weeks because I wasn't a good producer. You, you seem to think that you do have the ability to connect with people, motivate people, really get, get things moving along, which entrepreneurs have to have, right? I was doing it all my life. And, which... You, in fact, you said if you met Jennifer Aniston, she'd fall for you like that. I believe so. What would sweep her off her feet mostly about you? Not his money. Right, not my money. But I'll give you an example. If, if, if I was in a relationship with Jennifer Aniston and she said to me, John, let's move to California, 3,000 miles away. Hey, leave your kids behind. Come with me and live in my $5 million mansion. You know what I would say? What, are you kidding? You think I'm going to leave my kids for you? Dr. Phil, he wants to raise these boys. We had an argument about his boys. It was always my boys, my boys, my boys. Raising three kids is not easy, but when I did it, I was working 10, 12 hours a day to provide for my children for almost eight years while you did absolutely nothing for them. <clears throat> nothing. I never got a dime from you. I still to this day pay for their shoes, their clothes, their braces, everything. You call me up and ask me to pay your electric bill. You have no clue what it is to go get a job. You're an entrepreneur businessman, but you know what? You're nothing. You're not a businessman, John. You're a failure. I, look, I'm having a little trouble wrapping my mind around all of this, and, and I'm not sure I need to be here for this character assassination. You could do that on your own. What you're saying is that you, you have all this skill and talent and ability, and I hope you do, and I, and I hope you get back on your feet. But at this point, you, you're not in business, and you, you don't have a job, um, and you, you say you've written a book. It, it, has the book been published? No, it's written. It's ready to be published. It has not been published. You're basically just at home all day. Right. I do some odd jobs on the computer. I'm not just sitting there with my hands folded. I earn a few hundred dollars a week working out of the house. Now, it seems to me that it's, it's obvious that this isn't working. What, whatever. You, you can say he's a failure, a loser, broke, no job, no future, delusional about all of these great things he's going to do. But in the meantime, your children are twisting in the wind and they're spinning out of control and you're not there. You said, they don't do this with me, but they do it when I'm not there, so I'll just choose not to be there. I don't get that, and you need to explain that to me. So think about that. Mm -hmm. All right, next, we see John's black eye and the boys roughhousing, but according to Lori, that's only the tip of the iceberg. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll slap him in the head or I'll slap him in the shoulder, but no violent hitting. He's violent. It's getting worse and worse. He hits them, punches them, pins them down on the floor. If he says that he hasn't hit me, that's 101% of a lie.
Well, we're talking with divorced couple John and Lori about the unconventional way that they have chosen to raise three children. I say unconventional because Lori has primary custody, but the boys are living with their dad instead. Now, dad says, look, I confess, I'm out of control. Nothing I try works. Tried it all, and whether he's trying it right, trying it wrong, whatever, it doesn't work. Lori decided she needed a new life, so she moved out of state with her boyfriend, Joe. I live 1,500 miles away from my children now. My boyfriend has given me a very good quality of life. I believe that Lori moved because her boyfriend wanted to move. John can't stand Joe. I believe that he feels that Joe stole me away from him. Based on what I've seen, he's controlled. And I believe it's the reason that she left and not being involved with the children is because of what he says. If Lori had a way, she would be living near the boys. In my new life, I'm very happy. <laughs> Alex, get off me. My old life brings back the worst memories and nightmares. I try to keep them completely separate. If it wasn't for the three boys, I would have forgotten all about it completely. Lori's boyfriend, Joe, is joining us now via Polycom. Um, Joe, what's your take on all of this? It's a pretty tough situation for, for the kids. Basically, you're not getting the entire truths. I'm looking for the truth. Is that guy you? All right, well, I'll give you, I'll give you the truth. Okay. I'm, I'm the guy. All right, I mean, let's hear I it. am the guy. All right, let's hear it. All right, first, first of all, uh, the uh, situation with them, uh, the IRS and everything like that, was totally John's arrogant fault. He's a complete arrogant, belligerent liar. That's number one. He pulled up in front of the IRS in a $5,000 suit driving a Ferrari and said, you know, this is what I'm willing to give you. If you don't like it, let's see what you're going to do about it. And they nailed him to the wall. You know, you don't do that. John is a heavy drinker. He is an alcoholic. He was before he went to jail. Don't smile, John. I see your face. You're a pathological liar. You're an alcoholic. How can you expect those kids to respect you at all when they come home and you're passed out? You don't know whether you've been doing work on the computer or you've been on pornographic websites, which you don't block the computer so the kids see you're on there. They go on the TV. They see you watching porno flicks. You don't block that. You know, you tell the kids... I don't have to, don't shower every day, it's no good for you. And when they get sent home from school with headlights, you're calling Lori on the phone, I don't know what to do. You roll your eyes, you say this, you say that, but you know something, John? You say you're there for the kids. You're full of crap. You're there for John. You're using the kids as a wedge to look for sympathy. You do it with your sister, you do it with Lori, you do it with the state of Florida, and now you're trying to do it with Dr. Phil. You know, okay. All right, your gotcha. show is over. All right, gotcha. Let me, let me interrupt here. So if, if this is the... You, you want to respond to that? No. He can't because okay. he's been lying. No, because yeah. I'll sit here for a half hour and, and, and explaining everything. It's not worth no. it. He can say whatever he wants. <clears throat> okay. Do, do you believe that Joe's telling the truth, Lori? Absolutely, 100%. <clears throat> okay. Then here's, here's the thing. I, this is my problem, and, I, and I'm not saying that this is true or it's not true, because I'm not there. I, I, I don't know. What I know is you've got chaos inside that home. We agree on that, right? Correct. And maybe it's because of everything Joe just articulated. Maybe it's for other reasons, or maybe it's somewhere in between. But you believe it's true, and Joe believes it's true. And my question is, if you believe that, how could you leave your children in that situation for one day? How can you sit up there 1,500 miles away and leave your children in that situation for one day? I don't get that. They wanted to go try to live with their father, Dr. Phil. I expected him to try to do the right thing. But you know now and have known for some time what the circumstance and situation is. Well, this is why we're here. Well, and what you want from me is what I think. I think you need to get back involved with your children and mother them the way you should be doing. They obviously are in harm's way. One of the biggest concerns Lori has is that the violence 
in John's household cuts both ways. Look at this. I'm frustrated because I love my children. I want them to become good boys. Sometimes he gets a little crazy. My dad goes on like rampages, as we call it. Talking to the children is not an option for John anymore. The kids have told me that John gets very physical. If I do something wrong, my dad will probably yell at me and if I don't listen to him, he will hit me. Maybe I'll slap him in the head or I'll slap him in the shoulder, but no, you know, violent hitting. He's violent. It's getting worse and worse. He hits them, punches them, pins them down on the floor. My dad hits me mostly in the face. I'm afraid that my dad is going to hurt me. In order to control my boys, I have not hit them. The last time my dad hit me was yesterday. He hit me like right here, and you were like, that's how I got it. That's why he has a scar on his face. It's not a scar. What was it? It's going away. As far as heavy handed, I'll grab him, but no whacking. Trust me, if he says that he hasn't hit me, that's 101% of a lie. Hmm. Um, I would like to talk to the boys. Just sure. say on chat with any objection no, from no, either no, one no, of you. Not at all, no. So I'm going to excuse myself, and when we come back, with the parents' permission, I'm going to sit down and talk with John and Lori's boys backstage. I'm going to talk to them back there because I want to pray to them out here in front of y'all. Uh, and hear what they have to say about the turmoil in their home. You know, as they say, out of the mouths of babes. We'll be right back. I'm backstage about to talk to John and Lori's three boys. Their mother lives 1,500 miles away from them. Their dad well, he just says he's at a bit of a loss about how to get this situation under control. Frankly, I'm not concerned about all the drama and the accusations going back and forth other than the extent to which it affects these children. So I want to talk directly to them so I know what's going on. Knock, knock. Hey, boys. Hello. How are you doing? I'm Dr. Phil. What's your name? Chris. Chris? Alex. Alex? John. John, how you doing? Good. So, listen, why do, you, why do you think we're all here? My dad thinks that it's too hard to handle three boys on his own, so, you know, yeah. it's partly why we're here. Yeah. Are, are you guys misbehaving? Sometimes, yes. Why? I don't think I am. Sometimes. You know, like you are? No. Sometimes. So you're a good kid? Yeah, I don't Is it these characters that are problems? It's, yeah. Sometimes we misbehave because, like, you know, our dad is, like, too overprotective or tells us to, like, do stuff for him, like, do his toys or something, find his remote. Yeah. And we're tired. Yeah. Well, you know your dad loves you very much, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What would you change? I'll start with you. What would you change if you could change something in the house? And this is the time, because we're going to make some plans here, so this is a chance for you guys to kind of weigh in and get some things changed the way you might want it. So what would you change? Uh, I don't know. Maybe to live with my mom. Maybe live with your mom again? How did that work when you lived with her? Uh, it was, uh, I think it was better. Better how? Because she always provides for us and stuff. Uh-huh. Provides for you? Mm -hmm. Does your dad not provide for you? He does, but not as much. Yeah. Uh, what would you change? Uh, I would change the fact that my dad is always being cranky and yelling at us. Yeah. So you get angry when he yells at you. Yeah. Now, you, you said that when your mom left to move, you thought it was just temporary. How did you find out it wasn't? Because she didn't come back after, like, a long time. How would you guys feel if she moved back home and you guys lived with her? I'd be happy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd feel good. Do you get in fights with your dad? Yes, sometimes, both of us. You said that he will hit you, drag you to your room, and tell you to stay there. And if you got out, he would put you on the ground, put his knees on your arms, and hit you. Yeah. You say he hits you in the face. What do you mean he hits you in the face? 
He hits me in the face. He just slaps me. Slaps you in the face? Um, have you guys seen him slap your brother in the face? Yeah. Yeah. You, you both seen it. Has he slapped you in the face? No. Yes. Has he slapped you in the face? He didn't slap me. He slapped me. And not in the face, but, you know. He like, slapped both of you in the face. Why like you once, once or twice. You guys are lying. But, like, not that hard. Why did you sock your dad in the eye? Because when I was on the computer doing my report, that was really long, I was almost finished, but then he said, get off the computer. I'm like, all right, just, like, one more sentence. And then he said no. And then, like, he got on me and started hitting me for no reason. And I'm like, why are you hitting me? And then he's like, ah. he just started screaming. And then I just, like, hit him and I just left. I went to my room and closed the door for the rest of the night. So you were trying to finish your homework? Yeah. You said that you saw your dad get Alexander down and hold his hand over his mouth so he couldn't breathe? Yeah. Well, what did you do? You know, I, I pulled my dad's hair yelling, get off him. This sounds like a lot of turmoil, yeah. a lot of drama going on. If the situation changed, whether it's with your dad or your mom or whatever, and things just calmed down, would that be better? Yeah. I mean, you, you want it to be calm, right? Mm-hmm. And if you guys had to do some things to help it calm down, like to be more under control and to follow some rules and to kind of take care of responsibilities, I mean, you're willing to do that if it would, if it would help everything calm down, right? Yeah. Because you guys can't be fighting all the time. I mean, come on, at some point you got to grow up and say, look, we, we got to stop crashing into each other and sticking a bag over each other's head. And I've seen video of some of this stuff where you're roughhousing. I know some of it's for fun, but at some point you got to say, hey, you know, we got to calm down some, right? And, you, and, if, and if that would help the situation, you're willing to do that, true? Yeah. Is there anything you want me to be sure that I talk to them about? Like yelling at us and stuff. You stop yelling. <laughs> you know, stop yelling and like don't be mean to us. Yeah. Okay. All right. When we come back, I'm going to return to the studio and I'm going to give John and Lori my assessment on exactly what I think needs to happen. And I will put verbs in my sentences. We'll be right back. What I would like to say to my mom is, I just would like to see her more than two times a year. I like to say to my dad, I want you to stop hitting me because it's really annoying and I want you to treat me a different way. Well, what I like to say to my mom is, I want you to move down here by our house so we can like be closer. I miss my mom a lot. What I would like to say to my mom is that she needs to dump her boyfriend. She doesn't need to date my dad again. I just would like to see her more than two times a year. What all my dad knows, I'm not afraid of him. I wish she would stop yelling at my brother. I like to say to my dad, I want you to stop hitting me because it's really annoying and I want you to treat me a different way. What I want for my dad is, you know, care, love. Like, he really does love me. He says it every night, but when he starts hitting me, all I can think is, Everything he said is a lie. You guys had an opportunity to think for a few minutes and an opportunity to watch me sit down with uh, your three, three sons. Uh, anything you want to say before I say what I have to say? No, I, I heard what they said about me hitting them. Yeah, I spank them around, um, but um, I don't beat them up. And when he said I had my hand over his mouth, when I went to grab him, when I pulled him off the computer and he whacked me in the face. See, at that point, he's standing up, and I'm not going to fight my son, so I grab him and I put him down on the floor. And he was screaming every <laughs> So I put my hand over his mouth. Now, they're saying that I'm suffocating him. They could talk all they want, okay? I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and try to make my kids, you know, say that they're liars. They're exaggerating is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say? Well, Dr. Phil, obviously John and I are not going to get back together. And if I were to move back to Florida to be with my kids, I would have them move in with me, obviously. Um, however, I have raised them, uh, brought them up financially, fi financially, physically, and been there for them, as you heard them say. And I just don't think it's fair that John 
you know, stay the way he is by not being accountable and responsible as a good father, monetarily, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally. They don't really have a dad, as far as I'm concerned. The lies, the drinking, and everything else has to stop. Let me tell you all how I approach this from a problem-solving standpoint. Uh, you have to look at this in terms of you put things on a priority list. You put the top priority, second, third, fourth, and, and you deal with that top priority. <clears throat> and my attitude about things is if you have a top priority and you find yourself working on anything other than the top priority, then you need to stop what you're doing and start working on top priority. And the top priority here is the safety and security and nurturance of these boys. And let's talk about what we can agree on, okay? There are, there are five people involved here. You, John, and those three boys. One, two, three, four, five. All five people universally agree that the situation right now is not working. So when something isn't working, what do you do? You change what you're doing. And it needs to change, and it needs to change right now. So the question is, what are you going to do about it? What's going to happen? And what I'm saying to you is you are the mother, and you have minor children that are involved here. And if what those children perceive to be true is true, then this situation is abusive or certainly dysfunctional. Now, if what they're saying is not true, but, John, I think you make a serious mistake when you engage your children physically in any way. The adult is supposed to be the calm in the middle of the storm. Uh, once you get on a base level of physically grabbing your child, then you now have surrendered your position as an adult and you've gotten down to becoming one of the boys. I have no doubt in my mind that you love those children, but I think you are making some really bad parenting decisions that has caused you to lose control in this situation. Do you need help with this? Yes, you do. And I am prepared to arrange for and bring you some serious and substantial help to bring order to your relationship with these boys. They need some professional counsel. You need some professional guidance on how to redefine your relationship with these boys. And a big part of it, as I said to these young men, is they have to step up and conduct themselves in a more respectful manner. And let's take a break. When we come back, Lori, I'm going to tell you exactly what I think needs to happen from your end. We'll be right back. been talking with John and his ex-wife about the many mistakes that I think both of them have made in raising these three boys now that there's been a divorce and divided homes. Look, uh, these kids aren't even almost through being parented. And you have delegated, maybe even abdicated, uh, your role as a parent here. And that's a luxury you can't afford. Unfortunately, that's just not a realistic option. And I'm sorry. And if that messes up your relationship with Joe, um, I, you know, we, we, when we have children, we sign up to make sacrifices. And that's a sacrifice you have to make. Should you get help from him? Of course you should. And I have said, I will get help here. But... Those boys say they want you back in their life. Uh, it isn't working here, and you need to plug back in here. It's a sacrifice you have to make. There's no alternative to it. Um, and, and, and I think you need to do it, and I think you need to do it right now. Mm -hmm. um, I and I, I, don't know, I don't know what your ability to do that is, uh, but I can tell you that those boys have an urgent need for you to do that. Well, we've discussed that, and I totally agree with you. I'm telling you, you need to react to this with the utmost urgency. 
Because let me tell you, it's awfully hard to unring a bell. And you let one of those boys do something that brings them into conflict with external authority. They obviously have no respect for authority. You let them take that same value system where they get into conflict with the law, or they get into conflict with some girl's parents, or they get into conflict with somebody at school, and they start get, get a record going. And that's a bell that's awfully hard to unring. And right now, you're still in preventative mode. You need to plug back in right now. Okay, okay next, I'll tell you one of the biggest mistakes that I think divorced parents make. We'll be right back. You know, it's difficult to go through a divorce when you're an adult. There's no question about it. But children, see, they're in a position of being completely helpless. It's like, you know, it's like waiting for lightning to strike. You have no control over it. You just know it's coming. And I've outlined some very specific needs that children have when they go through divorce. And all children have these needs at all times, but they become exaggerated once a family is broken up. Number one is acceptance. They need to know that they belong somewhere, that they're part of something, that they are accepted by both parents. They have to have an assurance of safety. They need to know, I'm safe where I am. They need to have freedom of guilt or blame for the divorce. And they need structure. They need the same structure they had before you went into it. And so often parents feel guilty, so they say, well, you can stay up late, or we're going to relax the rules because you've had it so tough. That's exactly the wrong thing to do. Keep that structure in place. They need to see that there's a stable parent who has the strength to conduct the business of the family, that somebody is at the helm, and this family is still doing the business of the family. They're still getting up in the morning, going to the store, taking care of things. And above all, let kids be kids. This is, let, let them do what they do. You deal with everything else. They shouldn't be dealing with adult decisions. Go to drphil.com where you can find out so much more about the very issues we're talking about today. You can always find me on Twitter.